good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever you're finding time to listen to this show, we thank you regardless, don't we, Kay? Indeed we do. Indeed! I ain't ready for this one. Welcome back to Back to the Classic, the cinematic movie podcast that takes you back to the iconic films of 20 years ago. I am Jay Alonzo. It's your boy, Kay Williams. What's going on, Kay, man? Not much, man. Uh... <laughs> Definitely intrigued to talk about this one right here because this this was one of my one of my favorite movies. One of mine as well. I can tell you before last night, I hadn't seen this movie in about ten years, probably maybe more than that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, before we get into that, how was your weekend? Oh, it was good, man. I ain't do nothing. I became lazy. Yeah, you know, didn't do nothing at all. Caught any uh, good movies this weekend? Uh, I did not. You know what I did this weekend? I sat down and watched the whole Marvel series. The I whole did MCU? From beginning to end. The whole MCU. Like I did from Iron Man all the way up into uh, Guardians and even watched Deadpool. I ain't even going to lie. I, I, I had to get into a little Deadpool, but I went back and watched a little Doctor Strange. Even so though, I had to get get back into it. Even though Deadpool is nowhere near involved in, in the MCU. I know, but you know, <laughs> he's going to be in the next X-Men, so mm-hmm. hey. After you get done watching all the all the Marvel movies, you're like, hey, why don't I watch some more Marvel? So I've, I got a little, you know, First Class and Days of Future Past, a little Deadpool. <laughs> uh, how did you feel about uh, X-Men Apocalypse? You know, I think they could have did a lot better. I was upset at the way they uh, created Storm as a petty thief. I I, ain't, I wasn't feeling that. I thought Storm was alright. It was a lot of uh, it was a lot of different things. I think they could have switched up on, mm-hmm. like Psylocke and her weapons. Mm-hmm. But you know, she was still fine. So I, I took it as it was. So, so fine. I uh, was that able was to uh, catch up on a few movies this weekend. I, I had my daughter and her friend at the house, so uh, while they were doing girly stuff, I was in my room watching movies and catching up on stuff I hadn't seen in a while. But I finally got a chance to uh, rewatch uh, The Magnificent Seven, the Denzel Washington remake. I still love that movie, man. I think the movie came out really well, and it could very well make the top ten best of the year. I agree. I agree. Magnificent Seven was a dope movie. I think I went to the theaters and watched it twice. Uh, yeah, I saw it in theaters once and I have a screener for it um, here at home. So I was able to watch it over the weekend. It was fun. Had a good time with it. So, mm. Kay, are you ready to get into Two Minute Drill? I am. And I, and I think I got something that's going to stomp you. Are you sure? Are you sure? I, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping. So for those who are just tuning in, Two Minute Drill is a part of the show where myself and Kay, we go back and forth with uh, rapid fire questions to make sure that we both did our homework, sat with the movie, and we can uh, answer these questions accurately. I think Kay just may get me on this Two Minute Drill. I'm not too sure, but I think I got some questions that's going to stomp him as well. So you ready, Kay? I don't know now. You got me scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but let's get it going. You, you want to do the honors? Kick it off. So... In the casino scene, when Jim Brown asked for a raise and he was denied, who were the two boxers that could replace him? Oh, uh, Buster Douglas, Rocky Marciano. Uh (laughs) Negative. Ah, it was Leon Finks and and Buster Douglas, right? Buster Douglas. Ah, damn it. Okay. What causes the Martians to attack for the first time? The dove. The damn dove. Which hurt me. I'm a Sigma, man. That's that's a symbol of peace. (laughs) You don't shoot the dove down like that. We use the dove. Damn dove. All right. I got you. Uh, Who played Byron Williams' wife? Oh, that was... was uh, Jim Brown's wife. That was coffee. That was uh, uh, Sugar Baby herself. Pam Greer. Lord bless her. There you go. Lord bless her. Looking good. <laughs> Looking good. Uh, Jack Black's character, Billy Glenn, finishes assembling the gun in how much time? One minute, 53 seconds. Close. Mm. One minute, 57 oh. seconds. Oh. 
Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. I was I was close. I knew I was in there. I was in there. <laughs> <laughs> I got one for you. In this star-studded cast, give me one of the kids of Pam Greer and Jim Brown. Ray J. <laughs> Ray J that. is in this movie. That. For a bonus point, do you know who the second one was? Um, Ahmad from Soul Food. Real name is Brandon Hammond. There you go. Mm-hmm. You get that extra point. All right, name the two signs guards. <clears throat> sorry, here we go. Name the two signs guards held up before the second meeting of the Martians. No applause, no bird. <laughs> Correct. And we, we got 20 seconds. Go. Danny DeVito's character was known as what in the cast? Oh. Was he a lawyer? Correct. Uh. He was the rude gambler, the lawyer. So, from looks of things, we are actually tied. So, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do the honors and just kick it off for you, Kev. Uh, Kev. Shout out to the noise, by the way. I'm gonna kick it off for you, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, no qualms with that. No qualms with that. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, when I put on this movie the other night, it had been the first time I seen it since. If I'm guessing correctly, maybe 04, 05. Now, this was a movie that I, I really got into when I was a kid, you know, because I didn't know that Tim Burton directed this movie. It was just something about... I didn't know that. Man, it was something about aliens and, you know, it was like like a, like a rip on Independence Day. And I didn't know they were based on cards. So, it's so much more that I learned when I watched it for the, you know, for the second time in years. But if you don't know what movie we're talking about, people, we are talking about the star-studded, world-renowned Mars Attacks. They weren't ready for it. One ready. <laughs> One ready for people it. People of Earth weren't ready either. They weren't ready either. <laughs> Mars Attacks, release date, December 13th of 1996, opening weekend with The Preacher's Wife and last week's movie, Jerry Maguire, worldwide gross mm-hmm. of $101 million with a budget of $70 million. $101 mil. Off a seventy million, come up. yeah, seventy million dollar budget. That's a little come up. Fifty two percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Do you agree with this score? Mm, I would at least gave it a seventy on Rotten Tomatoes. I would have gave it a seventy. You know, now watching it from nineties to now, I would have still given it a seventy. Like today, back then, to this it day, probably been a good ninety. Yeah. Today, I because I, you got to think, you can't get mad at the graphics because it's so old. It was for 1996. Obviously, it's still old. Yeah. But that was best for what yeah. it was at that time, See, though, for sure. And and the storyline was dope. You know what I mean? And it was pure comedy. So, I would have gave it a 70 on Rotten Tomatoes, especially in the in a comedy category. Well, now watching it as an adult... You know, some of the jokes that you would think would would hit, they don't hit as hard. But, you know, you do remember certain scenes like, you know what? I remember this scene. And when you watch it now as an adult, thinking back at it like, huh, that shit was funny. And I didn't even think about it. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's get into it. I'll kick it off. Mars Attacks. The movie opens with this family outside of a, 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 a farm, if you will. And then I love the line that the guy on the tractor says. He says, um, what's going on, uh, Filipino New Year? Has there ever been such a thing? You know, I think what made it even funnier was the area they were in. They were in Lockjaw. They were outside of a small town called Lockjaw, Kentucky. (laughs) Is that a real place? Lockjaw, Kentucky. And you got a Filipino family that's doing a farm. Yeah. I don't think that's a real place. <laughs> but nonetheless, though, that kicks off our movie. <laughs> In the war room, the general is is so ready to attack to the point to where, like, Jack Nicholson, he doesn't want to start a war with the Martians. He wants to meet, get that photo op, and be the coolest president who's able to negotiate a, 
a peace treaty with the Martians. Meanwhile, General such and such wants to just go over there and just bomb them. Yeah, the General, uh, I believe he was played by Rod Steiger. Rod Steiger. Um, Steiger, there you go. Hey, you know, I, I was with him from jump. Y'all got all these ships outside the planet. Man, let's go ahead and fight them now because we already know they're here for war. They ain't here for peace. Well, at the time, then, uh, at the time, we didn't know that they were here for war. We we thought they were just here to be here. And uh, and, and General Farmer Fran really wanted to take it to him. We got to annihilate. We got to cow, cow. That was his whole thing. True, but you know, I I, I was with the general because, in in my opinion, that would have been common sense. You know what I mean? It's way too many ships here for them to act peaceful. Did you notice that? Way too many. Did you notice that in that scene? Jack Nicholson wants to, you know, set up how he wants this to look. It's got to be uh, Abraham Lincoln meets Leave It to Beaver. What does that fucking mean? Right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because he was like, you all know that story. And everybody was like, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. I didn't know that story. Makes total sense, Mr. <laughs> President. Totally. So after that, they go they go to the uh, casino scene. Mm-hmm. And you got a... Uh, Jim Brown, who's being portrayed... Well, you got Byron Williams being portrayed as Jim Brown, Mm -hmm. who talks to his wife, his ex-wife, I apologize, uh, who is played by Pam Greer. He's like, you know, I'm still coming. Are you cool with me coming out there? She's like, yeah. Then you got uh, Jack Nicholson, again, playing a different character. He plays uh, Art Land. Art Land. Who's trying to open up his casino... Something about galaxies. <laughs> it was called. It, it was called the Galaxy Casino. Okay. Yeah, I was close. Was, was I, knew casino, was, I right. saw a galaxy painted in the back. He's really just scoping out with his wife. He's just scoping out how the casino game works. I like the scene with the nuns talking to Jim Brown. He was like, uh, "Y'all seen that fight?" She was like, "Yeah, we're big boxing fans." He was like, "I didn't know nuns, nuns are boxing. Watch fans? boxing." <laughs> Oh yeah, like, sure. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> so, I, I have a question for you. Hit me with it. What if Jack Nicholson was president? You know the way Jack Nicholson played it. People gonna be mad when I say this. I honestly believe if aliens was to drop today, that's probably how Trump would play it. You think so? I think I... just his, just his demeanor. You know, yeah. Let's go ahead and see if they're friendly. With a billion ships surrounding the planet. Let's go ahead and see if they're friendly. And then after the first attack, he'll be like, it could have been a common mistake. Let's try it again. I honestly think Trump would have handled this more like how the general would have handled it. Like, I'm not for the talking. I'm I'm down for it. Let's go over there. Let's nuke them sons of bitches. You'd, he'd have been like, nuke them all? That's I, yeah, how you I think feel? so. I believe he would. Yeah, I'm, I'm not for the talking. You know, I think that's that Shark Tank talking. It could be. It could be. The Apprentice. (laughs) Another note that I have is the the scene to where we get to Jack Black's uh, family and Jack Black. You have little brother played by Lucas Haas. And then you have the grandmother, which I could very well have the the That Chick Award by by the end of today's show. But the grandma keeps it so real. The son comes home from, from the donut shop. Sees the mom, and he goes, uh, Mom, you want a donut? The mom goes, how fresh are they? And then he says, Bake Fresh Monday. Richie, that was six days ago. All right, give me a couple. <laughs> <laughs> right. She kept it real, though. She wasn't going to let them donuts go. Like, shit, six days, it ain't seven. Pass them. It's still good. Hit that threshold. They still good. Go ahead, give me a couple. But it's funny because it goes, you know, it keeps showing the grandma character. And let's be real, the grandma is like batshit crazy. But she means well. <laughs> she got that heavy dementia going. Heavy, heavy dementia. Another note that I have, Pam Greer snatches her kids. Now, love that scene. <laughs> probably one of my favorites. This scene is so funny because it reminded me of a time when... Me and my cousin in L.A., you know, during the summer vacation of elementary school, we would go to the uh, to the Boys and Girls Club, right? And okay. one day, my cousin's mom, my aunt, dropped us off to Boys and Girls Club. And we were like, you know what? I'm not really feeling 
you know, the snacks at Boys and Girls Club. We're going to walk over to this 7-Eleven down the street and go get some snacks from there instead. We're like maybe right. eight and nine at this time, right? So we're walking over to the 7-Eleven. And as we're going inside, thinking we made it to 7-Eleven, it, it was a hell of a feat, but we got it done. And as we're about to grab our stuff, in comes my cousin's mom losing her shit. I mean, caught us every customer in the book. <laughs> Why the hell aren't y'all back at the camp? So when I saw Pam Greer pull up on Reg and Brendan Hammond's characters and just snatch them up out of the arcade back on the bus and continue with her shift, I'm like, that's a mom right there. Yo, this scene was so dope to me because she was cool up until she passed the arcade and said, I got to make an unexpected stop. The way she stopped and was cursing them out, it, it was it was pure comedy to me because when she got them back on the bus, everybody was clapping. Like, Go ahead, girl. Everybody. Go was ahead, clapping. girl. I've seen that probably once in Detroit. <laughs> Please. On the bus. Do tell. Dude, where the whole where everybody on the bus, all the passengers were clapping because the bus driver did something crazy. <laughs> After that scene, Thursday, May 11th, Natalie Lake and Michael J. Fox are having a conversation over the phone, and she's telling him that she got the interview with Pierce Brosnan, mm-hmm. who is Jimmy playing Bond. the scientific Donald Kessler. Mm-hmm. She's has, having that interview with him, and then you got Jack Black. Hitting on the Greyhound, getting ready to get deployed out. Now, wait, wait. He told uh, b- b- his before, brother to Before leave. you get to that part. <laughs> Don't touch my stuff. Before you get to that part, going back to the Pierce Bronson's character for, for, for Dr. Kessler, how in the hell did they get the full info on these Martians a day after knowing, knowing that they're here? You know, I think they, they could have fixed that a little better because they got all this information off of video. Off of video, exactly. Off the video. When the aliens interrupted television, he came in the next day like, so, this is what I got from everything. Based off that I one they have telepathic telegram. powers. They uh, are organic life forms like us. Mm-hmm. And what do you say? They breathe nitrous oxide. Huh. I'm like, dang, so you know what they breathe and they ain't even landed yet? Based off of that one telecast. Got you. All right. That's it. Off that one telecast. Now, he had a whole spreadsheet. <laughs> he had a nice little presentation. Those are educated guesses, sir. But going back to uh, to uh, Jack Black's character leaving off to uh, go fight the Martians and whatnot. Grandma, once again, hits him with a line that it kills me as my hair. He goes, goodbye, Grandma. Bye, Thomas. It's Billy Glenn, Grandma. I know. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't care. She ain't care. Everybody was Thomas. Love that line. Everybody was Thomas. And who was Thomas? Was that the father? No, but I'll tell you a funny story, though. Uh, what I read, Thomas is actually the real name of Jack Black. I think Thomas is his first name. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that shot's fired. IMDb. That's crazy. You gotta love it. That's crazy. You got Byron talking to uh, his manager about getting a raise, and he shot him down so cold. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, I'm I'm still helping support my family back east. I just wanted to know. He was like, I thought you were divorced. He was like, I am, but I'm still supporting him. That, see, that's a true father. Yeah. That's a true father right there. I mean, it's- and he was like, you know, I want to raise. What's good? And the, his manager was like, bro, look, you're a pretty good guy. You're real cool, but you're not worth the raise. I mean, I can get Leon Sphinx or Buster Douglas for even less. And Take I, what you got. That was shots. Shots were fired because of that. He wasn't ready. He won. He wanted to punch him right then. At that the press conference that um, that uh, Martin Short's character has, I believe he's the uh, press secretary. He um, lets the press know that what's 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 happening, what's going to happen, and then you notice that one reporter that asked the question, um, "Do the Martians have two sexes like we do?" Mm-hmm. Another part of the movie that I just. I didn't pick up on until I'm well into my twenties and I watched it again. The, the the report that stood up, I'm like, he has or she has two sexes. What you mean? When she stood up and said, Do the Martians have two sexes like we do? And you look at her like, I think you're both sexes. Mmm. Hermaphrodite? Uh, transsexual? 
You think transsexual before the transsexuals became big? Uh, yeah. Apparently. I mean, the voice was a little deep. It was like big and Steroid like treatments. like cotton stuffed. <laughs> I never peeped that. See, I, I, I definitely I was thinking it was a dude that was looking for an alien mate. <laughs> That's what I took it as. But he, I didn't even think too much on it. But he had on a women's outfit. Blouse? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on. So we I have... <laughs> so an, an, another good note for me is we have uh, Byron and Art in the limo. And Art is trying to get Byron to pretty much go over to his competitor's place. Tune him up a little bit. Give him the... Uh, uh, you know, fork out some money. And Byron, like a good, upstanding gentleman of the law, and, uh, you know, uh, 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 providing father, ex-husband, but providing husband, he opts not to do that. You know, he don't eat pork. He, uh, you know, he lives, he makes his mind right. He does what he got to do. Let me say something. Go ahead. This was one of the funniest scenes to me. Because Art was like, look, I want you to give him one of them iconic left hooks. I give you two G's. Just tune him up for me. And Byron went on a rant. He was like, man, why are you going to come at me like that? You know, I ain't even about that life. That life you, you came between me and my wife back in the day. He was like, you know, I done changed my life. I done found a lie. I stopped eating pork. And out of all that he said, <laughs> Art was like, so you, gave up pork. you stopped eating pork? <laughs> you gave up pork. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that I really got through. So... The scene when uh, they have General Casey played by the late Paul Winfield, they mm-hmm. they have him go out to I'm gonna assume it's Pahrump in Nevada um, to meet up with the Martians to be there when the Martians actually land. At this time, we get the uh, we get the uh, the Doctor who I thought for a long for the longest time was also played by Jack Nicholson. Turns out he just a lookalike. But he has this machine. Yeah, he definitely look like him. I thought I thought it was Jack. But he, he has that machine to where if they say something, he can record it and then play it back in our language, and then we can say something back to them in their language. Now I got I got a couple of things with this scene. What's up? On the drive with Colonel Casey, did you peep the phone conversation he had with his wife? Did you peep the phone? <laughs> Yes, beep the big sat phone with the extra, <laughs> extra long antenna that was flopping around. But the <laughs> but the conversation he had with his wife was straight sellout. Straight sellout. Yeah. yeah, baby, I know. It's a good thing. I told you, if I stay in my place and don't say nothing, <laughs> it'll get you good places. I was like, huh? Like, what? Are you serious? Little does he know he's going to be killed in the next, like, two minutes minute and a half they made that quick <laughs> so so getting to that scene so when, when the marshes actually land and then um all i have to do is running back by saying we come in peace and then that dickhead hippie decides to release the bird and they're looking like what the shit is that and then they decide to shoot down the bird and everybody else that's out there with them did you hear it in the news conference like people when when michael j fox was doing his newscast and Natalie Lake was doing hers and she was like, Oh my God, it's coming out of the sun. It looks like a giant hubcap. <laughs> and then when the, uh, when the, when the land, when the spaceship landed and it rolled out, she was like, it's opening up. It looks like a giant tongue. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so they pretty much, they, 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 they kill everybody that's out there Jack Black, he gets his comeuppance. He he dies. First off, shout out to Jack Black. Did you see how skinny he was back in those days? That was a young Jack Black. That was like a fresh off Tenacious that D was Jack Black. Very young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, he was very young with that one. I was like, man, he's pretty skinny in this. Now, the next scene I love because once we get back to to the war room at the uh, White House, you know, you have uh, of course the general. We got to annihilate. We got to kill. As you can see, they're not here to be peaceful. They're coming to kill. And so you have Jack Nicholson, who was trying to, you know, still delegate. But he turns to his wife, Glenn Close, asks for her opinion, and she gives the most G answer. Kick the crap out of him. Oh, yeah. She was about that life on that yeah. one. Yeah. No, 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 no. We try to be nice. Fuck that. Let's, let's nuke him. 
Pierce Brosnan was getting on my nerves, though. When they played it back, he was like, you know, it could be a cultural issue. How do we know birds don't mean war? <laughs> <laughs> but they ended up playing it back like when the okay so what they got a, a recording from the aliens and the aliens all of a sudden know who congress is uh they want to have a meeting with congress well yeah after they uh they issued their their apology for the first attack yeah that was the issue i had i was like really so the aliens know who congress is so they know the legislative judicial and executive branches now it was a second at- them that? it was a second attack that um that happened that they grabbed natalie and kessler and turned uh, natalie into a dog and put the put her dog's head on her body dope scene yeah that was a great dope scene, scene. mind you they're, they're in a fucked up position but they're still flirting they're, <laughs> kessler and natalie are still flirting heavy what had me tripping was when they first met each other on her show today's fashion michael j fox who plays jason stone he's watching it on tv and before the show gets in while the show is getting interrupted with the alien feed he goes and hey, that dude just copped a field yeah, he just copped a field i did not peep it the first time so i had to rewind that scene and rewatch it he definitely copped the he field. grabs this shit out of her knee like just he as did. it was starting to fade away he grabbed that knee like hey I got you. He did. He he got him a nice little feel on that knee. He rubbed it around. <laughs> so with that second attack, you know, you have the two guards there that says uh, no applause, no birds. And they invite the Martians over to Capitol Hill. And then that Martian ambassador pulls out something. And you can tell he's up to no good because he dips back into his pocket, looks at the crowd, pulls out his gamma ray gun and starts spraying the whole crowd again. His blast game was crazy, though. He <laughs> took a whole row out. A whole section with his. Like, the most amazing poker face, like, ever. And then you got uh, you got the battle inside Capitol Hill. Mm-hmm. And Pierce Brosnan is like, Mr. Ambassador, what are you doing? This ain't what we're here for. They knock him out. Start dragging him up, the, uh, up into the spaceship. Everything just start going batshit crazy. They start attacking everywhere. You got aliens out in uh, India taking pictures by the Taj Mahal while it's getting blown up. Aliens are shooting up Vegas. They done shot up the donut shop. Which re- reminds out me in- a lot of Randy's Donuts in, in Inglewood. Shout out to Randy's Donuts in Inglewood. Oh, it's a spot that looked like that? Yeah, the, the, the huge... I hope it ain't that small. No, no, no. The, the huge donut. You can see that donut from like all different places of L.A. So by the time you get to Inglewood and this huge Randy's Donuts sign... Randy's Donuts is by far the uh, culprit of a lot of my weight gain when I was in L.A. So, shout out to y'all. Yeah. <laughs> the donut sign remind me of, of uh, The Simpsons. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That's now, the first thing I peed. The scene I want to talk about is when we get that alien, the Martian chick, and Martin Short with his horny ass. He was trying so bad to bag something. He was out there picking up them uh, street walkers like crazy. Oh yeah, them women of the night. Oh yeah. So he so he sees the uh, the Martian chick who he thinks is a real chick. I don't know what chick you know glides when she walks, but uh, she's walking and on her skates or whatever. <laughs> you know he he's you know getting his Mac on. He lets her come into the uh, to the White House of all places, shows her around. He is getting from her what he thinks is the the come get me eyes. And so when he sits her down on the bed and she's just chewing that damn gum, he's like, screw it, I'm going in for it. And he just tries to kiss her. And I guess she bit his lip the first time? No, no. She didn't open up her mouth. Right. She didn't open up her mouth. So he was like, hey, how about we get that gum out? Who the hell sticks their finger off, in somebody's mouth? Why would you mouth? stick your finger in somebody's <laughs> mouth? My, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Why would you stick your finger in somebody's mouth? You deserve to get your finger bit off. You don't know. You don't know her, bro. To be on that Crazy. level. <laughs> I think this was a dope scene. The alien, first off, didn't kill him. She just knocked him out cold. Mm-hmm. He done pull. She done bit off his finger. He done pulled some of her uh, mask off. She's going straight for the president mm-hmm. with a little eyeball ring. That was a dope ring. I want one. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, an assassination attempt on the president and the first lady. Secret Service busted. First lady in. was dope. Yep. She didn't panic too much. She threw that shoe straight at him. Yeah, because they killed the dog. She loved that dog. So, <laughs> so Secret Service runs in, kills the, kills the Martian, right? And I love this scene, too, because the president is looking all into the, the eyeball ring. On the other side of that ring, you see the Martian ambassador who is like, Fuck it. Everybody suit up. We're going to war now. That's just what it now, is. Now, I think that was the I think that was the head guy because the ambassador had a red cape on. Right. So I think that right. was like the emperor. He was like, everybody suit up. Everybody suiting up. All the aliens suiting up, but they only use. Now, I'm going to dissect this scene because they they only use two aliens to do this scene. Mm hmm. The first alien, if you notice, when the uh, machine comes down and puts the suit on him, mm -hmm. the first alien did like a jiggle to fit the suit. Then the next alien that came up walked straight out. So the third alien again did a jiggle, and the fourth one did the same thing the second one did. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I peeped that. Y'all only used two aliens for this scene. It's funny how you caught that. I wouldn't have caught that. I wouldn't have caught that at all, actually. Uh, I pick up the small things every now and then. God bless you, Kay. So, <laughs> so uh, Ray J and Brandon Hammond, they are on a school field trip in which the Martians pretty much bust in on that, shooting up the White House. And it's one of, it's one of those, th th those scenes because as they're shooting up shit in the White House, right, Ray J and Brandon Hammond manage to get a hold of the Martians' guns, and now they're shooting at the Martians now, right? But it gave mm -hmm. them their, you know, their moment of fame. Like, what are y'all gawking at? Get that president out of here! <laughs> that was their Worst hero line. Worst thing could have ever said. Yeah, that was... That was <clears throat> it was yeah. a hero line, but he was too young. No feel... It wasn't... It wasn't you could tell that wasn't real. He ain't really feel that. <laughs> he wasn't feeling it. But also... Was, that, that was that starstruck stardom... Scene, he was like, "Yeah, I'm about to get paid for this." What are you gawking at? Oh, baby! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's then, probably how he got Kim? You think he got Kim off Mars Attacks? Uh, probably. He he did a lot of things first. I mean, he hit that first and shot up aliens for the first time. You know, he's done a lot in his life first. <laughs> hmm. Probably. <laughs> We're back at Art's hotel, and he's pitching um, his his investors for his new hotel completely oblivious to a spaceship behind him blowing shit up. Oh, uh, it was like five spaceships blowing shit up. Yeah, you're right. They are blowing up everything that was around him except his spot, but then he turned around and they flew right to the window and then blew it up. Now, he should have did better because two of his investors tried to tell him. Now, see, where they failed is they, didn't, they just sat there and stayed. Mm -hmm. I would have been gone. First time the other dude tried to tell him, mm-hmm. He ain't listening. We out. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave, man. Um, I don't know if you see that behind you, but I'm about to go. I'm out. And, of course, the scene that always stood out to me is the next scene. We get Tom Jones, man. Mr. It's Not Unusual himself. Dope. I love this scene. It's one of my favorite scenes. Let me ask you a question. Uh, because the aliens straight kidnapped his backup singers. And replaced them with them. And they was grooving. Mm-hmm. And they was grooving. So, they was getting it popping. Side until question. Until he stopped the music. What nationality is Tom Jones? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, I, I was going to say he's mulatto. I was thinking he was black and white. Nah, nah, nah. I know when he was talking, I'm like, I'm trying to make out his accent there. I just can't figure out what it is. I don't know. We're going to uh, we're gonna have to Google that one. Before the end of the show, we will we will definitely Google that one for sure. Definitely, we got to do that. Another, another another good scene to me is when uh, we're going back to uh, the country family in the boonies, and they're in their trailer loading up. And even though they kept it Prepping real, for war. yeah, they kept it real. When 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 uh, the son is like, hey, "What about grandma?" Oh, forget about grandma. She's halfway to Mars already. I mean, you kept it real, <laughs> but fuck. <laughs> He did. He was like, right, man, fuck that. We ain't going all the way out there, bro. But isn't that one of y'all moms, good. though? She, she already lost. Isn't that one of their moms? Huh? Yeah, but that don't matter no more. She already got dementia heavy. She's good. And then <laughs> she done lived her life. The mom says, well, I'll tell you but one thing. his mother, yeah, she had the dopest line. <laughs> she locked up that double barrel shotgun and was like, I tell you, they ain't getting this TV. 
<laughs> That's the only thing you worried about is the TV. So Billy says, "Well, I'm out. I'm gonna go get Grandma. Y'all defend this bullshit if you want to." He leaves, and then this Zord at the perfect moment. At the perfect moment, because the Zord of a Martian comes out of nowhere, starts taking trailers and like smashing them together. Meanwhile, did you notice that Jack Black's character, his girlfriend, which is I believe it's uh, Christina Applegate, is in the other trailer next to his mom's house. Getting in with another dude anyway? Yes. <laughs> I peeped that. Now, now that scene there had me dying because of the music they were listening to. And the two perverted aliens that was breathing heavy with the, to the beat. With the windshield wipers on their helmets so they can like, all right, okay, okay. <sighs> <laughs> that part was great. I think she died the best. She had the best death. She was getting it in when she died. She died while getting it in. I can't hate on that. I, I refuse to. So the grandson goes to get his grandma. Meanwhile, an, another part I thought was pretty cool. The president, Jack Nicholson, is laid out on, on this Oval Office desk. And he's just like, what do I do now? Of course, the general. I mean, ready to you can't nuke. be mad at him for being laid out like that in the war room. Because you got to think everything he just lost. He just lost. The whole White House, mm-hmm. during him running away, his wife decided to stand under the Nancy Reagan chandelier and watch it fall on her. Mm-hmm. And he should have listened to the general that said nuke them all in the beginning. Well, the general came back with the uh, orders to deploy and he signs it. And of course, we're all thinking, well, this could be in the movie right here. They send out this, is this nuclear bomb. And meanwhile, the Martian sent out this little horn of a thing <laughs> to meet up with this bomb. And then once these two clash, the explosion goes up. They're all looking like, oh, oh, this could be it. And the little horn thingy sucks up every piece of flame that was out there. It goes back to the ship. And they inhaled this Dope. fire like it was like helium in a balloon. And started laughing at him. <laughs> I mean, uh, at this point now, what you going to do? Yeah, it ain't nothing you can do after you done lost your nuke <laughs> in outer space. After the little balloon with helium in it has been sent back to the aliens, we cut back to the grandma who's at the senior citizen shelter, and she's just listening to her music while the son, while the grandson is on his way. Aliens is ripping through this place left and right. They shooting old people up, mm-hmm. rolling down, rolling them on fire in their wheelchairs. And she's oblivious to everything that's going on. Everything. This scene I love because the aliens decided not to shoot her off top. They want to play with her since she ain't paying attention. (laughs) He done called, he done peeked in and was like, oh, she don't even know what's going on. They called his friends over. They bring, bring in this big ray gun to shoot her in the back of the head. The grandson pops in like grandma and she lets the music go. Now, here's the question for you. What type of music is she listening to? The hell if I know. I'm not even going to attempt to guess what that is. That That is hard on the ears is what it is. I can imagine why the aliens would die. <laughs> that that shit made my head start to like swell up a little bit. I'm like, ugh, this is terrible. I tried to Shazam it, and I couldn't catch it fast enough because the background noise I had. So I was just like, man, I'm going to have to try and find out. Because I, I was thinking it was like some type of yodeling. No, 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 not a yodel. That's definitely a love song to somebody during a certain period of time. So, Luckily, the grandson was smart, and he peeped that her music was killing them instantly. She's, I think they're sick. <laughs> so the next scene is a, a scene that's, that's, you know, it sucks, but it could very well be, you know, in my takeaways. But... The uh, the scene is when the ambassador or the head honcho of the Martians goes over to the war room, and then uh, we see the general not going out without a fight, starts shooting at everybody, and then the head honcho for the Martians throws out this blue sphere, if you will, that makes the general shrink to like bite size, and he's still shooting and talking shit. Hey, he is a true American. He ain't going out without a fight. He gonna still talk his shit, and you gonna hear what he got to say. He still now, shooting. Talking what I shit. liked about this scene, what I liked about this scene, was the arrogance, the ego that the aliens had. 
Because <laughs> when they first blew a hole in that door, they threw that ball, that bouncy ball in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it ended up being a snow fear, a snow globe for aliens. Mm-hmm. That's all it was. And they was laughing at him like, y'all thought this was going to kill you. Yeah. That no. that scene, I kind of like, but I can see why it would be a takeaway. They ain't have to step on my mans like that. It becomes a takeaway because when the president gives his can we all get along speech, you would think, you know, the marsh is like, you know what? Maybe he has a point. They don't even understand what the fuck he's saying. You know? Well, I, I, I disagree. I disagree. I think they did because during his can't we all just get along speech, the head honcho alien shed that Denzel glory tear. That one Denzel glory tear, exactly. So I think they knew what he was saying, but they ain't care. <laughs> nah. And that's why I think it, it could be on takeaways only because when they they shake hands and then this trick of a hand all of a sudden starts like crawling up all up and down, the president eventually stabbing him in the back. And then they planted the Martian flag through the body of the president, which was another gangster scene. It was about that life. Through and through. It was about that life. This is this this is my takeaway. The grandson is they cut back to the scene with the grandson. Mm-hmm. He's like, We're on our way to the radio. Mm-hmm. Then they cut scenes and go back to Jim Brown and Tom Jones, Danny DeVito, and they're all running to the plane. That one of the uh, that Art Land's wife had mm-hmm. before they get to the plane. Danny DeVito tries and lawyer his way out of this death. It didn't work. They get to the plane. Everybody hops in except for Jim Brown. And Jim Brown goes, "I'm tired of this costume. I'm tired of these weapons. Nope, nope let's nope, do this." Listen, man if, man. if you go say that line, you gotta say that line right because that would Jim Brown was the man for that for this one scene. He walks out. He goes, "No weapon." No clown outfit. It's me, Byron Williams, heavyweight champion of the world. And he's ready to fade. <laughs> he's ready to go. He was ready to go. And he was handling it, too. He took out uh, uh, the main one. He cracked that, that uh, little helmet he had. Mm-hmm. And then started pounding on the other, what, five <laughs> out of 50? I think, he, I think he was able to knock out maybe like a legit four of them before like they just jumped on him yeah they they jumped that ass yeah they jumped that ass so he got beat at this point now uh grandma and the grandson are at the radio station and they're able to play this song that people are now noticing is going to kill the martians right as we're on the uh, martian uh main ship they're all getting headaches and exploding and the floating head of dr kessler and the dog head of natalie they both find themselves rolling on the floor because they know the uh, ship's getting ready to crash. And even though the ship is getting ready to crash, they have no body. They have just strictly heads. They still found time to give it a love scene, a, a good love moment before they both die, ultimately. Well, I mean, they ain't had no choice. You can't do nothing with no body. Yeah. You can't run. You can't do nothing. Might as well get a kiss in. And say how much I love you. That was the only way they was going to get something. But my thing was how he fall in love with her that quick. Hmm. Uh, well, he was flirting during the show, and you see how he, he grabbed that knee. He went for that knee. <laughs> he, yeah, he went Michael for that J. Knee. Fox should have grabbed that knee better. I don't know. Michael J. Fox ain't have a chance. He wasn't grabbing the knee right. He wasn't. Gra- I'm about to go home and grab my girl knee. And just really grab her knee. See how that how far that gets me. <laughs> like, get your damn hand off my knee. I'm telling you, man. Grab the knee. See if it works. At this point. At this point, uh, the Marshes are now dead. We get to the scene of um, Billy and Grandma receiving the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor outside of what used to be Capitol Hill. <laughs> yeah, what's left of it. And then uh, Taffy, the daughter, Nat- Natalie Portman, is the one who's uh, awarding them this, you know, this honor. And then you go back to the other scene of uh, Pam Greer, fine ass. You know, help, you know, helping the kids clean up stuff, the kids cleaning up stuff, everything is over. But then we get the alien outside, and the big ass foot smashes his head. And who do we got? Byron Williams. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Byron Williams. And he's walking into. He's home. And they managed to rip off the whole side of, of, of the apartment building, which is unheard of. Oh, yeah, the whole front side. The whole front side. That's, that's the crazy part. The whole front side. <laughs> the final scene would be. They come out the uh, the cave, 
and they see all these animals popping out. Mm-hmm. And then Tom Jones breaks out in the song. Boop, 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 I'm going to need boop, Tom Jones to stop singing. Boop, boop, boop. Like, so you just feel like first off why the animals was beat the animals was bobbing to the beat though hey the woodpecker right. was going left to right that's unusual tom i'm sorry it's not unusual, that's unusual. Th- th- that is pretty unusual that's unusual yeah, that is that's the movie the whole shebang the whole shebang so let, let me ask you this if hollywood decided they wanted to remake mars attacks would you be at all interested i don't know some classics can be remade. I think this is one that could not be remade. I, I, w- I think they should leave it alone if they were ever to think about doing a remake. Mm. I just don't see enough star stu- like a big star-studded cast that would make it as funny as it was back in 96. Yeah, it, you know, for a movie with such a ridiculous premise, I don't see it having a... A sequel or the remake treatment because you know it's a movie that that did well, but it's a movie that had its place in time, and that place is definitely 1996. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. All right, so let's get into takeaways, man. You ready? I'm ready. All right, I want to start this one off. My that guy award definitely goes to Jim Brown. Yep. Well, I got two: Jim Brown and the Colonel that wanted to nuke them all. Mm-hmm. Those are my two guys for this movie. Why? Because they both played that role so well. It wouldn't be right without those two. You know, the general was like, hey, man, let's go to war off top. Jim Brown was like, man, I'm tired of the shit. Let's get it popping. Mm. Okay. Those two guys. Give me your that that chick award. award. That chick? Mm Mm-hmm. Grandma gets that chick award. Why? Because she wasn't about nothing, but she was like, you know. I don't think they like the music. If it wasn't for Grandma and her horrible music, everybody would have died. Exactly. The world would have been over. Uh, this Grandma f- kept it real. This Fool Award. This Fool goes to Danny DeVito. Ah. Yeah. DeVito gets this Fool. Well, <sighs> DeVito and Art Land. When Jack Nicholson played Art Land, those two were fools. Mm. Why? Because Danny DeVito thought he can lawyer his way out of a death. Mm-hmm. They don't give two shits. If they killed the dove, they killing you, bro. I'm still hurt by that. If they killed the dove, they definitely gonna kill you. <laughs> All right, you can't give them a Rolex. That don't mean nothing to them. And Artland, he deserved his death. Mm-hmm. He focused on too much stuff. He talking about how if the aliens take over the planet, they still gonna need a place. <laughs> they to gonna stay. need somewhere to stay. No, fool. They they not gonna come to your casino. Sorry, you're both fools. All right, uh, give me who was your guy, that guy award? Oh, that guy award goes to Byron Williams. I mean that that guy he represents you know the father that messed up in the past, but is ready to you know clean up his act and do his thing and be there for his kids, even when there's a damn Martian invasion happening as we speak. So that guy award definitely goes to Mister Byron Williams. All right, who's that chick? Oh, Grandma. And one reason, and one reason alone, Grandma gets that chick award. When they first blow up the Congress, and they cut to the scene to where Grandma is at her nursing home, the first thing she says is, they blew up Congress! Ha, ha, ha! She didn't care. <laughs> she didn't give two All right. shits. She knew what was going to happen she, anyway. She already knew what was going to happen. That's what it sounded like to me. Yeah. Now, who's that fool? The general has to get that the the, the full award. Um, he he wasn't in a position in a position to delegate, but he didn't really need to be because he was all about going over there and kicking some Martian ass. He didn't care where the guns came from. He just know he wanted them guns, and those guns were going to get used for sure. So eventually, his 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 hate for the Martians and his undying. Wish to try to go over there and fight with the Martians got him shrunk it down to an end and stomped out by the Martian. Man, they ain't had to stomp him out like that. Though. They had to stomp him out. That's why he gets they that. That's why he gets the this fool award. The this fool award doesn't hey, discriminate. Man, he he was that guy because even when he was small down to an ant size, he was still about that life. Mm. We will win. He was still about that life. He even threw the guns at the shoe. You can't get mad at the general for throwing his guns at the shoe after realizing your bullets ain't doing nothing. Nah, 
Na man, nah. <laughs> All right, um, Zai. The iconic scene for you. Mm. Iconic scene for me. My iconic scene is definitely Grandma at the nursing home while the aliens is going ham. <laughs> because she carried that whole scene by itself. Mm-hmm. The punchlines, the jokes she threw, and that scene made it for me. I was like, man, I, I need to see more scenes of Grandma, for real. Straight up. And cut that out. What needs to, what needs to go? <sighs> what needs to go? I'm going to say what needs to be added on this one. Okay. It never showed how the military found out about this music. Like, it, they should have added something to, to kind of put that together. Because, yeah, it's being played on the radio, but who's really listening to the radio at this moment? So they should have had something that kind of blended why the military and everybody is walking around playing this music on the radio. That song in particular. There's never a scene that added it. Right. Okay. So I felt they should have added something as opposed to take away. I felt like it would have made the movie longer. And the movie's only like maybe an hour 40, hour 45. But it does fly by to the point to where a lot of stuff... It does. A lot of stuff that you would think would, would be... In the movie, like, yeah, nah, it's fine. I think they should have gelled it together a little bit better. Mm. The iconic moment for me is um, the scene when they come in, the marshals come in, and Jack gives his, his, uh, uh, can we all get a long speech, and he ends up dying with the Martian's flag coming out of his body. That's a great scene. Okay. Mm-hmm. Was it because of the speech? It was because of the speech, but it's because of the speech because the speech got him nowhere. It still got him killed. <laughs> so, yeah, the speech, it, it, it riled him up. Got him, you know, you know it had people like, yeah, that's true. Let's get along. Humans, Martians, together on something. And, you know, he gives you that fake Denzel tear. Next thing you know, like, nah, man, you got to die. Uh, my cut that out Take moment, away. I don't have one. Honestly. Yeah, it wasn't too much to cut out. I don't have one. I think the movie itself, with the length of it, is perfect. I think, you know, you got to look at this movie for what it is. You, you have to look at this movie for the guilty pleasure that it, it actually is. You know, it's not a movie that's going to win any Oscars anytime soon. It's a movie that is downright stupid, but it's so stupid, it's enjoyable. I actually wouldn't take anything out. I think the way it's laid out, the way the movie actually progresses, it's not that bad. I definitely don't want. I agree. I definitely don't I want a remake, though. Yeah, I, the, the, I don't think a remake would be good for this. Nah, not for nah. not to make it a franchise. It wouldn't be good. Nah, it's not necessary for. A remake. But I could say this: Tim Burton does need to make another movie similar to this. Well, Tim Burton's last movie, some live action, because you know Tim Burton is really known for his claymated movies. Yeah, really over the top different i didn't mind mrs peregrine peregrine's home for peculiar children i just at times just found it boring yeah it, it, it was just boring but then again a lot of tim burton's last couple of movies i have been a fan of like dark shadows was terrible was it big F- not big fish is it big fish no no it's uh i'm drawing a blank this is uh christoph waltz and amy adams movie can't i can't think of the name of it. I, i'm drawing a blank but yeah but that one that was boring too so, I'm, I'm looking forward to a Tim Burton movie when he decides he's going to come back and do, like, a Beetlejuice 2. Or, I'll even take it, or Scissorhands 2, if, if that's what we're going to go for. But, Mars Attacks is a movie that a lot of people didn't even know Tim Burton directed. I honestly didn't know that until I rewatched it these past couple of days. Exactly. I'm like, oh. I was like, oh, this was directed and produced by him? Well, I didn't know that. Excuse the shot of me. And apparently, he also... Cole wrote the movie, but he didn't want the credit for it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's that's definitely an interesting fact. <laughs> he was like, look, I got too much. I'm taking credit for Give the credit to my co-writer. Are you ready for quick hits, sir? You know I am, man. Hit me with them quick hits. You be giving me some good stuff that I don't be knowing about. Man, when I when I go through, when I put together notes for the show and I see what I see for quick hits, I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I never I never knew that. So let's get into it. Quick hits. Let's do it. 
The writers weren't sure what the Martian should sound like, so the script read, act, 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 for all their lines of dialogue. This became the actual word, <laughs> this became the actual word spoken by the Martians in the film. So, so they never could figure out what to tell them, so they, they just left it. They just wrote down, act, 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 like, you know what, let's keep that, <laughs> that works. <laughs> That works. We don't know what they say, but we'll just keep it at act, 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 act. That's great. When people had their flesh vaporized from their bones, the remaining skeletons were either red or green. Tim Burton explained this had this had been done because the movie had been scheduled for a Christmas release. Okay, I could peep. I could see that because it came out what December thirteenth. December thirteenth. So yeah, so he kept that it makes festive. Sense. You know, it's killing people, but it's festive. Even though the movie takes place from their timeline in the movie in May. Right. But it's festive. (laughs) It's a holiday movie that takes place in May. But it's festive. We'll keep the Christmas colors. Screw it. It's fine. It's festive. (laughs) Johnny Depp turned down the role of reporter Jason Stone, later going to Michael J. Fox. Yeah, I don't see Johnny Depp playing that role. Not me neither. Nah, I, I can see him wanting to be, like, the one to, like... I'm glad he turned it down. I can see him wanting to, like, fight the aliens himself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tim Burton reunites with Danny Elfman after not working together on Ed Wood. Burton and Elfman experienced creative differences, quotations, during The Nightmare Before Christmas. Which is one of the weirdest movies I've ever watched. But you know what? Honest to God truth, it's hard to get a Tim Burton movie... Without a Danny Elfman score attached to it. Could they go so hand in hand now? Yeah, but you know, creative differences be uh, tearing things apart. Just beefing over stupid shit. Warren Beatty was originally cast as the president. Paul Newman was cast when Beatty dropped out, but then left the project over the violence concerns. Michael Keaton was also concern- was also considered to play the president. Michael Keaton. I could see him playing president. That could have worked out. I, I think uh, that could have worked out. I think Paul Newman. This this is not in Paul Newman's wheelhouse. He's not a comedy guy. Uh, and Jack Nicholson, really, at that time, he wasn't a big comedy guy either. But when he did do the stuff, right. it's like okay, I enjoy Jack Nicholson's comedy. Like eventually, when he does like Anger Management and um, As Good as It Gets and, and those films, Jack Nicholson can mm-hmm. do comedy. I don't think Paul Newman or Warren Beatty, maybe Warren Beatty, but I don't think Paul Newman was capable of doing comedy at that time yeah i don't see paul newman doing it i don't see his voice as a good strong president Mm -hmm. i would have liked to see paul newman more as the press the was it secretary of press the martin short character secretary yeah i could see paul newman doing no way get out of here really you don't think so nah not at all i just i wouldn't see him as president (laughs) not at all in the very early stages of filming, the movie was supposed to have 60 movie, sixty major characters, but it was later cut down to 23 major characters. Scrap characters included a suburban housewife, a soldier, a televangelist, a couple of college students, several of Professor Kessler's colleagues, a doctor and his fiance, an actress, a couple of survivalists, and a police officer. This movie would have been Way heavy. This is a Marvel movie at this point. Yeah, that's that's way too many people. It would have been heavy, way too heavy, way too many personalities, too diff- too many different story background stories. Too much to too much to remember. Like, oh, this this is long. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they they kept it good at, at the amount they had. Oh yeah, totally. Mars Attacks is the only movie in which Jack Nicholson plays a presidential character. That is true. Yeah, I've, I've actually never seen him play a yeah. president or anything like a president in anything else. Yeah, I've never seen him play anything to that level. In none of his movies. Imagine that. Okay, so let's wrap this thing up. K, what is your overall feeling about Mars Attacks? I love Mars Attacks. The comedy is good, especially for a 90s film. Mm -hmm. It kept the action rolling from beginning to end. It was straight comedy, straight action. There were no downsides. It wasn't slow in any moment because everything revolved around either action or comedy. Mm -hmm. So in my book... This is definitely a must see, a must rewatch. Now that I know it was supposed to be for Christmas, you could even play it for Christmas time. 
<laughs> Get your festive colors going. See, uh, uh, everybody um, dying, but, but, but their bones is red and green, so it's very festive. It's very festive. I, I think this movie is good for kids, we'll say for the age of 13 and up. Mm-hmm. Only because of the the sexual innuendos. And there's plenty. <laughs> so, yeah. I think this is a good movie. I definitely will rewatch it. Okay. Okay. Me, personally, I still got the enjoyment watching it recently, or last night, rather. I still get I still get the enjoyment when I watch it. Obviously, some stuff is predictable now, now that I've seen it more than once. But, uh, like I said before, a movie like this probably couldn't be made today. Because people are just naturally smarter. So, you know, mm-hmm. the, you know, we, we now live in a day and age where people are so literal with, with so much stuff to where they won't necessarily pick up on the the kookiness of what Tim Burton was doing at, you know, at that time. Especially with a movie like Mars Attacks. Right. Does it hold up? Not really. But I still get a legit enjoyment when I watch it. So do you think it deserved the 53% on Rotten Tomatoes, or do you think it deserves less? The 53%, I think, is pretty legit. Maybe 60, if I'm being honest. Like, you know, cause the movie never has no gut-busting laughs. True. There are some great, great moments in the movie to where when you go back and you watch it again after not seeing it for a long time, those moments still stick. Yeah, they still stand. Yeah, absolutely. So 52%. Maybe it's a bit harsh. I probably would have said 60. But overall, though, I think uh, from, for what it is and what is, you know, how it stands the test of time, you know, 20 years later, it's okay. I'm with you. It's all right. I think I still would stick with the 70%. You're gracious. Just because those jokes still stick. They still stand. You're gracious. They're not going me. nowhere. Thank you. <laughs> That's our notes. That's the show. Thanking everybody for... Listening into this week's episode of Back to the Classics, we had so much fun. Kay, I love doing this show with you, man. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going for it, man. Absolutely. Let the people know where they can find you. Hey, you can find me on uh, Instagram. Hit my IG at uh, PHA1914. Uh, on Facebook, I am K Williams, K A Y Williams. Twitter, I'm on PHA1914 as well. Nice. Now, Kay, you got to tweet people. They want to know what's going on with you. Let me tell you, okay? So, brief story. I was not, I was only into Facebook, okay? Mm -hmm. Until I did my master's. And in my master's, they said we had to make everything else social. So, I opened up Twitter and Instagram and Tumblr, I believe. I ain't never used it since. I just opened it up for the class. <laughs> so I'm I'm working on Instagram right now, okay? And then I gotta I gotta figure out how to retweet on, on Twitter. So <laughs> it's been some years since I'd have opened it. But you know, it still works. Man. K <laughs> I'll be tweeting K today. K <laughs> Well you can find me on all the social medias at uh, IG, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, all at I am J Alonzo. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe right here to Beat Network. Real Talk with Jay Alonzo is coming back. We have two new episodes coming up this month. Looking forward to that for you guys to kick off the new year. And uh, we'll be back again here next week doing the same thing again, okay? Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen. And wait till next week. Back to the classics. We out of here. Peace. Peace.